Hey, what's up guys? Still Rain here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review and overview of the Airbot Omnibus F4 Nano version 3 with the LC filter. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started here and show you everything that this flight controller comes with. Uh, of course it comes with the flight controller. It's 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter. The pin map uh, comes with it as well as you can see in the picture. It also comes with uh, pin headers if you choose to solder those on and you also have a choice at least you do uh, through ready to fly quads.com for a 60 millimeter or a 30 millimeter I believe this is a JST 8 pin 1 millimeter adapter which will be used to power the flight controller um, also for uh, current sensing uh, ground and it's also got the four mo motor PWM outputs so if you connect this to a 401 ESC, which I'm going to, uh, everything should work perfectly well. So we'll go ahead and get started. I'll show you some of the, or let you uh, explain to you some of the features uh, that this board comes with. Uh, it comes with a STM32 F405 processor, as you can see right there. The MPU 6000 gyro, which is really good gyro, a lot less noisy and less susceptible to vibrations. Uh, drag and drop OSD. There's the OSD chip right there. It uh, has D shot support. It uses the Omnibus F4 firmware, supports S bus, PPM, and it has DSMX ports so you could use it for your spectrum. It has a 5 volt, 1.5 amp uh, clean switch mode BEC with an onboard video filter which is pretty awesome so it'll eliminate a lot of the lines and things that uh, you'll see in your video also says it has a built-in current sensor uh, which senses voltage RSSI and um, also has buzzer pins uh, I'm not really an expert too much on this micro flight controller I'm not sure exactly where the current sensor is but it does have a current sensor pin down here I'll get to that in a minute and uh, point out some of the pins. Uh, it has a barometer. I'm not going to be using it. I know a lot of guys don't for these these little builds, but it's there if you want to use it. Uh, it has a Betaflight OSD, drag and drop OSD. I could take direct power from a 2 to 4S lithium polymer battery. And like I mentioned before, it is 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter, so you could use it on your micro builds or if you want to keep a full size build really lightweight this is the way to go and it also features uh, smart audio support so we'll go ahead and get in to some of these pins this side here as you can see doesn't have the silk screening which I'm not a big fan of but the other side has it and the pin map definitely helps you out here a bit so we'll go ahead and get started up here you can see there is a ground that you could use for your uh, for your camera or VTX uh, 5 volt pin you also have video in and video out we'll get to over here these two tiny pins right here are your um, uh, boot pins and I'm not a really big fan of pins I'd rather have a button but you know nowadays you really don't use you really don't even need to worry about these pins anymore because you just go into beta flight you know, attach this flight controller, and if it's Betaflight 3.1.7 or earlier versions, you just hook it up to Betaflight, go into the CLI, type in DFU, uh, and then hit the enter key, and it'll automatically put the flight controller in the DFU mode so you can flash new firmware. Uh, if it's Betaflight 3.2 or afterwards, you have to, same thing, go into Betaflight, go to the CLI tab, and type in BL and then hit the return key and it puts you in the bootloader mode so you can flash firmware. So we'll go ahead and go down to the next pins here. This is going to be your buzzer pin right here. This is your TX1. This is going to be your buzzer negative pin. Your RX1 pin. Down here is going to be your LED. Then there's going to be a 5 volt right here. These two right here will be ground pins, and this will be your TX6 and your RX6. 
So basically, for this board, what you have to do to get your S bus receiver that has inverted protocol working is you'll put your signal wire right here. You go ahead and solder it to the RX6, which has the hardware inverter. So FreeSky um, sort of protocol will work for this board. Then you'll go into Betaflight. The you'll go into the um, uh, the ports tab in Betaflight and go ahead and just enable uh, your your FreeSky S bus receiver right here once this is soldered up. And I also pulled ground from here and five volt power for there. Uh, to power all that so pretty awesome uh, pretty simple so that that's pretty much it for all the pins um, I was having a big issue with this board to where if you notice even on the pin map here there's a TX and RX one up here and then there's a TX and RX six up here so you are one and six are readily available but it's not mentioned anywhere here where there's a TX or RX3 or a UART3 which I haven't been, been able to find and I, what I'm guessing is is that there's four pins right up here and uh, one of them is the bottom one is ground the next one up is 3 volt for your spectrum satellite and then there's two pins up here that say SWD and SWC so those are the only pins I see uh, you know available that could be a UART3 I haven't tested them yet, but I don't see any other options uh, on this board to really help out anywhere there. I'll go ahead and flip the board over. And this connector right here is an 8 pin, 1 millimeter JST connector. Uh, another thing I don't like about this board is the only way to power this board is through this connector. There's no soldered on pins. So I'll go ahead and, and explain what each one of these goes to. And you could also see it there in the pin map. The first one is VBAT, and you'll connect your battery directly to that. Next one is a uh, current pin. Um, so if I, I guess if you're using like a PDB or a 401 ESC, you connect it there so it can pull the current and give you the, the correct parameters and values for that. Third pin over would be ground. And the fourth pin over says NC or no connection. And then you have PWM 1, 2, 3, and 4 for motors 1, 2, 3, and 4. So pretty, pretty easy, pretty simple to connect. And what I'm going to be using on this is going to be the Sunrise Cicada 10 amp 4 in 1 ESC. It takes a 2 to 3S LiPo. And it came with its own set of connectors. So what I basically did is I used the connector on this end, plugged it in that came with the Sunrise Cicada 4-in-1 ESC and this 10-pin connector basically plug in just like that and what's unfortunate is this 4-in-1 ESC had no direct power coming from any of its pin header so what I did here as you can see is I just soldered it on directly to where the positive end of the battery comes in so I'll be able to power the board with the full power of the lipo and there should be no issues there I'm not running current eventually I might try to run current but I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do this since there is no current sensor on this 4-in-1 ESC but I guess if you're using a power distribution board with a current sensor you could attach that that wire uh, up to the current on the board and get uh, the correct current measurements so not bad at all uh, I found you can get this board through myairbot.com or I got this one from readytoflyquads.com uh, relatively cheap price uh, you know not not a big deal I think it was about 30 bucks so I think overall it's a great tiny little board um, pretty much has everything you could need had nice filtered power for your video camera so with that being said guys uh, hopefully you learned something from this video learned how to hook up this flight controller uh, if you have any suggestions or or comments or know where UART3 is specifically on this board besides where I explained it might be uh, please leave that down in the comment section and uh, as always guys if you enjoyed this video uh, please like subscribe and uh, leave any comments down in the section below. Thanks, guys. See ya.